Have you ever had trouble securing your Flutter app? We have a great news for you! We will show you the easiest way to secure your Flutter app using the free Rasp security library. My name is Tomas, I am a mobile security developer at Talsec. My name is Jaro and I am Flutter developer at Talsec. We have exciting growth making news for Flutter community. But first, why would you need free Rasp anyway? In the past years, we have witnessed many attacks which have affected the business of many companies. A few years ago, there was a crack Spotify app which allowed users to use premium features for free. Application protection is not reserved only to big corporations. Even small companies suffer from attacks. There is quite an extensive list of security checks made by OWASP which is hard to fulfill even for the most ambitious fintech apps. And I really understand that smaller developer projects can afford such costs. My personal experience when I entered this field was with a banking app, which offered many layers of protection. My task was to defeat as many protections as possible. Only then I realized how big a gap lies between enterprise security and security available and known to devs and apps we daily made. In the past I've heard many horror stories. There are shady app stores which steal apps. There are crackers who modify your apps to unlock premium features. There are even crackers who inject advertisements and republish your app to official store. And there are the most rude crackers who divert in at payments to their own pockets. Speaking of horror stories, we have seen many questions on Google which arise recently. Like, my app was stolen by reverse engineering, APK stolen and posted to APK some or all our apps were stolen by reverse engineering and republished. And the common question is how to protect Flutter app from reverse engineering. Developers are angry. FreeRasp help you cover A03 and A09 vulnerabilities, that is injection and security logging and monitoring failures. A similar list made in 2016 presents vulnerabilities specific to mobile devices. So FreeRasp helps you out of the box solve M8, M9 that is code tampering and reverse engineering. Besides FreeRasp, Flutter already has many resiliency goodies you can utilize right now. You can use certificate pinning, which is a mechanism of connecting your app to your backend, which helps you prevent MITM attacks. You can also utilize out of the box, obviously, binary build, which is a way of translating your code into machine code which is hard to read and it really helps to protect your business logic against reverse engineers because it's really hard to decompile into something usable for them. The last resiliency goodies I would like to recommend you is obfuscation. Obfuscation helps you to cover real names of your classes or your variables and even helps you obfuscate your strings into unreadable form which is again a big plus in a fight against reverse engineers. I highly recommend to you learn more about secure development. These two resources which you can find in the video's description help you to get more knowledge about mobile security practices. The first one 
is OWASP Mobile Security Testing Guide, which has helped us in development at FreeRasp a lot. The second one is Google Play Academy, which covers topics like threat modeling or vulnerability disclosure program, which should be base of your security program. Okay, let's get back to FreeRasp, but what does RASP stand for? Yaro will tell you more. Runtime Analysis Self Protection What is Runtime Analysis? Well, Runtime Analysis checks your application constantly for weird or unexpected behavior. If suspicious activity is detected, it can notify a user in order to protect itself from being misused. But what kind of attacks can be detected? Hook Hooking your app using various frameworks in order to compromise an app. Root. If system is rooted, user has root rights which basically allows him to do anything he wishes. If someone leads the user to root his device, it is a possible attacker. If a root is found, the user is probably the target of an attack. Debugger. Application is running on debugger which is potentially unsafe. Emulator is also considered as dangerous environment for running an application that uses sensitive data. Fingerprint is most dangerous one. An attacker makes copy of running instance of the application and makes further investigation. How does FreeRust cope with these threats? FreeRust comes with temper protection, which guarantees that app's integrity remains unchanged. Repackaging protection is then used to ensure no one will be able to steal your APK and insert malicious code. Third protection feature, runtime analysis protection, is exactly what Yaro mentioned. It covers routing, hooking and generally tries hard to examine system and check every little detail which could suggest that system was corrupted. On the right, you can see a screenshot from demonstration application. It shows six security checks, which were performed on rooted or corrupted device, which was not only rooted, but it was in fact an emulator. And we did a fake cloning so you can see that application shows its fake application signature at bottom. But the most impressive feature of FreeRasp are free weekly security reports where you can check the security status of your app. Security report contains five different statistics. These are average incident rate, Incident rate dynamics, privileged access, app integrity, reverse engineering attempts. All of these come with very detailed explanation. Enough of theory, let's see FreeRaps in action. You can find FreeRaps and the whole implementation guide on pub.dev slash packages slash FreeRasp. If you like our package, be sure to give it a like. If you want deeper and better understanding, you can check our repo on GitHub. Link in video description. First of all, we have to make sure that FreeRasp is initialized as soon as possible. So let's convert the root widget to a stateful one. Now we overwrite init state where the whole implementation takes place. To be able to run FreeRasp, we need two things config to be able to make correct checks and callbacks to react to detected threats. Let's implement callbacks first. Talse callbacks are divided into Android and iOS ones. We will implement both of them. For purposes of this tutorial, we will just print a message to the console. Be aware that debugger callback is common for both Android and iOS, so it belongs to Talse callback. Now, we implement config. We have to provide the package name and hash of the app for Android 
an app and team bundle ID for iOS and watch your mail so that we can send you reports. Be aware that you need to accept an invitation from Elasticsearch in order to get these reports. Lastly, we just provide our config and callbacks to the task object and we'll call start function. And that is it. To check links mentioned in this video, go to video description. Subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any future videos. And let us know in the comment section below what you thought of this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.